Hello people, in this video, let us look at congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So in the diaphragm, there is a defect. As you can see here, there is a defect in the diaphragm which is allowing the, <clears throat> the bubble, the liver, etc. to enter the thorax and the lung is getting compressed. Okay, so look at this image here. So here you can see this baby, how uh, you can see the bubble uh, loops in the thorax, right? That is because there is a defect in the diaphragm which is allowing the bubble to enter the uh, lungs. So in this x-ray also you can see multiple air-filled cysts in the left hemithorax. There is a shift in the mediastinum to the right side, okay? So you can see this shift in the mediastinum to the right side. Because who is sitting here? All those black black are the air-filled cysts of the bubble. Right, <clears throat> and there is a absence of the outline of the left diaphragm. So there is absence of the outline of the left diaphragm. So this is uh, this is indicating to you congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Okay, so congenital it is. It is not an acquired uh, hernia. So basically, in these people, what has happened? There is a failure of closure of the pleuroperitoneal membrane. Which membrane has not closed? This you will have to write in the exam. The pleuroperitoneal membrane, pleural cavity is here, peritoneal cavity is here. The pleuroperitoneal membrane, that is nothing but this diaphragm has uh, has some defect, okay. So, there is a failure of closure of the pleuroperitoneal membrane. What will ha uh, happen because of this? Because of the defect here, <coughs> the loops, um, the intestinal loops ascend to the thorax and they compress the developing lung. So, they compress the developing lung, so there will be pulmonary hypoplasia so the lung will be compressed so there will be pulmonary hypoplasia and there can also be pulmonary hypertension pul persistent pulmonary hypertension can be there in the newborn pphn okay <clears throat> because of all this pressure on the lungs how will this child be when it is born this baby can have respiratory distress with a scaphoid abdomen so if the baby has respiratory distress with scaphoid abdomen you have to suspect congenital diaphragmatic hernia in this person just because there is respiratory distress you cannot give uh, bag and mask ventilation how can you do bag and mask ventilation right you will be putting pressure into this thorax which has bubble so the problem here is that the lung is not even being allowed to expand. So there's no point in doing this uh, bag and mask ventilation. So in these people, you have to do surgical repair. Okay. Now, anyways, look at this. When can this uh, be evident in the child? It's not just at birth. Okay. At any time, this may present. Okay. So the time of onset can be any any age. At any age, they can come and you can detect this defect. So this is for the diaphragmatic hernia. What you have to do in these children, you have to also check if there are any associated other malformations in these children. <coughs> okay. Then uh, uh, cardiovascular system, what you can see is that the apical impulse, um, it may be in, in a different place, right? The position of the apical impulse may give you a clue. So here they are talking about uh, the position of the apical impulse. The position of the apical impulse may give idea regarding the presence of congenital diaphragmatic hernia so a simple x-ray will tell you what the issue is and then you will surgically correct it okay so that is all about uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia okay so you will uh, surgically repair it we have written here surgical repair is the treatment of choice so you will have to push everything back into the peritoneal cavity and you will have to close that defect okay so there is a congenital and acquired diaphragmatic hernia according to the surgery textbook mostly these hernias are on the left side so this is uh, there is something called as foram uh, hernia through the foramen of bock dalek okay this is the most common diaphragmatic hernia so which foramen is is, is it using foramen of bock dalek and there is something else called as foramen uh, hernia through the foramen of morgagni this is parasternal hernia. There can be herniation through the central tendon. So what in all uh, foramen, so many foramens and some central tendon, with through all this there can be hernia. What is eventuration? Because atrophy of the muscle, paralysis of the muscle, etc. Okay. But here there is no defect as such. It is just getting pushed. So in this uh, diaphragm, <coughs> look at this. You are looking at the central tendon here in the green. Okay, this is the central tendon. Through this, there can be hernia. And what are the foramens they told you? Foramen of Morgagni. And then one more foramen they told you. Foramen of this one. 
there is another foramen that is foramen of botchdalic actually if you see via uh, diaphragm a lot of structures can go like the inferior vena cava the phrenic nerve the esophagus the iota so many things open here iota ivc okay that much you can remember and then the esophagus also okay so there are a lot of other foramens and lot of uh, opportunity for a hernia looks like isn't it <coughs> So you can do an X-ray and you will check gas fluid level. Thin rim of diaphragm is broken or shows a defect. Then um, what else? You can do a CT. That could be a gold standard. How will you repair? You will have to use non-absorbable sutures and repair the defect. Okay. So you push everything back and then close the defect. If there is e-ventilation, then how will you do? Because there is no defect, you will have to plicate the redundant diaphragm. Okay. <coughs> 